and this should cut over in just a moment. While this pulls up, hi everyone, I'm Peter Hornberger with uh, Bright Metrics. Some of you may know Bright Metrics, some of you may not. You will get to know us shortly. Um, we're a data and analytics platform that overlays on top of the Mitel Connect system, formerly Shortel. Um, and as the Mitel roadmap was being outlined, we're intending to fully support the directions that they're headed as well. So uh, keep an eye on that as, as Mitel continues to roll out developments around Connect. We're keeping in pace with that, have a good relationship with the team. We'll continue to support that. Some of you may know Bright Metrics and have seen it before and might look at what I have on the screen here and say that looks nothing like Bright Metrics to me. We are actually. Um, I'm giving you a sneak preview today of uh, a refreshed UI that we've been working on for quite a while now, about the last 18 months in development for about the last nine, but we worked with a designer for a long time. For those that know Bright Metrics as a platform, we've spent about 10 years heavily focused on features in our platform, and uh, we left our software looking like it was built 10 years ago. Um, and, uh, and we've now kind of come to a point where it makes sense for us to refresh our UI. So for anyone that hasn't seen this yet, uh, this is going to be rolling out over the next three weeks. Let me back up before we get too deep into the platform. I actually want to show you some things in the platform today. But before I do that, uh, the first thing I should do is introduce myself formally. Uh, obviously, I should address my accent. I'm from the States. I'm, uh, I'm here visiting. Um, I would kindly brought my president with me as well, if you might have noticed. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. All jokes aside, I'm, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, the Black Star team has been a great partner of ours for, uh, for quite a number of years. And uh, when they invited me to come out, it was a great opportunity and, and was happy to do it. So i um, very excited to be here. Um, as I said, you know, we've worked with the Black Star team for a while. Some of you may be our customers today. Please come by and say hello. I always love to meet our customers. But for those that don't know anything about Bright Metrics, we're a data and analytics platform, as I said earlier. But to kind of frame why what we do is important, when you think about the Mitel system, um, there's a significant investment that you as a company makes in your UC or your contact center platforms. And what we think is, when you look at the ROI, the return on investment around that system, uh, one of the biggest areas for that return to come to you is around the data that the system can collect. There's so much information that is drawn out of those interactions. The, the phone, and as you get into the advanced contact center spaces, you get into chat and email as well, that is the lifeblood of an organization. It is what really drives your business, whether from a support standpoint, a sales standpoint, all of those areas, uh, operations, billing, you, you name it, typically flow through in some fashion your phone system. And there's so much information that can be tracked and pulled out of the system around your caller's experience, around your, uh, around your operational efficiency. And if you can optimize in those areas, you will do yourself a service as a business. You'll make yourself more profitable. You'll make your customers happier. You'll grow more quickly. And so that's where Bright Metrics really comes into the equation. We offer a data analytics package that allows you to dig into what's actually happening with the interactions across your system. There's really four pillars that I want to highlight for you today that we tie into. And I'm going to do this by actually showing you a live customer some real information that I've got up on the screen here. I'll talk about them in a moment. But to frame this for you, there typically are four main areas of data analytics that we see as important in the system. And those four areas are customer experience. What's happening when someone dials into your system? Uh, staffing levels. Do you have enough people, especially when we talk about the contact center space, or if you're using hunt groups or work groups, those are you know, contact center light systems. Do you have enough people to serve the calls that are coming in? Everyone's been the caller that dialed into a, a call center and had to wait a long time. That's a staffing level problem. That's something you want to optimize around. You also have human beings that are operating within your organization. You want to figure out who's doing well, who's pulling their weight, and who's not. Is your team productive? And then lastly, as systems get more and more advanced, there's opportunities for automation, and there's also opportunities for training your team to use those advanced systems. Data analytics can give you information to tell you where those gaps are, where you might want to deploy those kinds of efforts and resources. 
To frame this for you, I've got a live customer here. I'm logged into Bright Metrics. This is an example of a real-time dashboard monitoring a contact center. This is very tactical information. I've got three different queues, and I can see live what's happening. This is the kind of view that a team will throw up on a TV in front of their call center and have them seeing, hey, there's you know two calls in my billing group, and one of them has been waiting 55 seconds. That's a long time. If that gets to a minute, it's breaching our SLA here. Uh, we can also monitor things like which, uh, which particular... Uh, agents are idle right now. And from there, we might need to make adjustments. We can manage supervisor functionality to shift agents in and out of these queues as needed. So very tactical information for the hands-on supervisor to see what's happening right now. How do I react? Really, what's on fire? But that's just one side of data analytics. The other side is the more historical trending information. And so this is an example, again, a contact center group. But this contact center group, I can see trends over 30 days. I'll tell you right now, 30 days is completely arbitrary. Everyone's reporting periods are different. You may look at me and say, I want to report on seven days or one day or an entire year. That's all things that we can do. This is just an example. But I can see here a number of stats that are breaking out for me in a graphical view. I've got in the upper left-hand corner some key stats. The 30-day uh, trends around count of all calls, how many calls have come into this group, the number that were answered, the number that abandoned. Abandon rate is a great example that I'll use as kind of a framing point for why data analytics is important. Uh, abandon rate's a measurement that almost any group should pay attention to. And again, that could be the two-person hunt group or the 500-plus person contact center. Abandon rate is an immensely important measurement. Here's what it measures. Of the callers that dialed into that group, what percentage hung up the phone? Think about the experiences that you yourself have had uh, dialing into contact centers. If you dial in, you'll wait a period of time, but everyone has their breaking point where you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting, and then you give up and you hang up. You say, I'll call back later. It's busy right now. That could be five minutes. That could be 15 minutes. It depends on what's happening in that day. Here's what's important. If that's happening too often, the number of frustrated customers is going to impact your business overall. So you want to optimize around that measurement. This group, you can see, it might be a little small for some of you in the back, but right here, that 6.82%, that's the abandon rate. This group is actually exhibiting a really good number. That's shameless plug because they use bright metrics. Um, but, uh, but in general, what we recommend is a is it targeting an abandon rate of somewhere between 4 to 8%. And why we target that is that's typically the right balance for a group between staffing level and customer experience. Here's why 0% is not the goal. There's a lot of teams that we work with that come to us and say, we don't want any abandoned calls. But to be honest with you, there's a lot of callers that will dial in. I do this myself all the time. When you make a call and then your other phone will ring or you'll have another call come in and you'll say, oh, you know what, that's more important. Let me hang up this call. That could be a three second time. If you're expecting your agents to pick up even that caller, that person doesn't want to be answered in that moment. That's not your responsibility. So in general, if you're able to answer calls that aggressively, it means that your agents are spending a lot of time twiddling their thumbs waiting for calls to come in. You'd be overstaffed in that case. So 4% is usually a good lower limiter to deal with kind of those calls that you don't need to answer. But once you get in those upper ranges past 8%, then you have a problem. Then you have too many callers hanging up, and you'll start to see that impact customer satisfaction trends. There's a lot of studies out there, and in particular, I, I pulled one here. I've got a slide deck. Um, this is a presentation that I give from time to time. We don't have enough time to go through all of it today, but I grabbed this particular slide out of it. This is a chart that compares call abandonment rate with customer satisfaction. If anyone's interested in this study, it's from a company called MetricNet. They're an awesome company to pay attention to. Um, but they've worked with over 3,000 call centers to pull these stats. But here's what's interesting. The call abandonment rates along the bottom starting at 0% and going to 30%. You'll notice that the customer satisfaction is in the 85 to 90% range pretty consistently here between 4 to 8%. Once you get past 8% on the abandon rate, customer sat starts to drop significantly. So that's the kind of measurement that we want to then take into bright metrics and start to evaluate and analyze. So this group has a good average overall, but there's a couple things I want to highlight for you. Notice in the chart down below, this is showing that same measurement trending over the 30-day period of time. On Friday, May 17th, their abandon rate jumped up to 13%. That's a big problem. Yes, their average overall for the last 30 days is good, but 13% is a little high for a Friday. So what's happening there? And that's where in Bright Metrics it becomes important to be able to see the graphical trend. So here's the information displayed for me. 
But really, what I can do from here is actually go a step deeper into the information. I see the trend, now I wanna know what happened. In the upper right hand corner, I can click on the magnifying glass to drill down into a reporting view that summarizes the same information from these calls down below here. So I have the chart along the top, a couple things for those that have never seen Bright Metrics. Everything in Bright Metrics is configurable. So that dashboard, that's just the sample. You can customize what those charts are showing you, what formatting they're in, all kinds of information and break it out in different ways. This one's really best viewed in a line chart, but you can see the controls here. And then those things can be saved back to the dashboard. But I came down to this view to play around with the report. Right now, this report's really, really simple. It shows me that abandon rate, 6.82%. But what if I wanted to measure that over the last 30 days broken out by hour of day? This is a great staffing level trend to take a look at. Well, this will show me as stack ranked the percentage of calls abandoned as it distributed across the hours of the day here. So I can see the noon hour, this, is, this number is consistently jumping up to 10%. We're outside of that 8% range. That's something that just seeing the number, the average, doesn't show you, but it's pretty easy to understand what's happening there for this group. The noon hour is the lunch hour for this team. The agents want to be at lunch, but the callers also, this is in particular, this is a company back in the States. They're a, a utilities department for a city, a municipality. So at lunchtime, a lot of their customers will dial in to pay their bills or they'll dial, dial in to... Um, they'll dial in to uh, request service turned on or off, those sorts of things. They free up at lunch from their own job, so they want to call in. The agents that man this call center want to go to lunch and eat, and so they're operating with a higher call volume and a lower staffing level, hence a rise in the abandon rate. That one's an easy one to understand. Sometimes it's more nuanced, and that's where you'll notice I have this fields and layout section on the left-hand side, and there's all kinds of values and measurements I could layer onto here. You know, for instance, if we didn't understand it quite so clearly, we could pull something like the average wait time to see, well, is that abandon rate, is that rise actually correlating to a similar rise in the wait average time? So I've got an average wait time down here of a minute and one seconds, and I've got this broken out over time here seeing the shifts as it happens, there's this fairly closely grouped, you know, their high water mark is a minute and nine seconds. So it's more the staffing level components that are driving this here. But that's just one example of how we can rearrange this report. We could do other things like, for instance, evaluate the calls on a per agent basis if we want to. So if I pull this hour of day off and I instead layer on the party name, you'll see that this is going to populate with the names of the agents that took the calls out of this particular group. So I can see that listed out here. The two measurements that I have currently aren't really useful measurements in that case. I might instead want to look at the uh, count of calls that these agents answered. So I could grab the count of all calls here and layer that in. I could also look at something like, well, what percentage of their calls did they transfer? Now we're shifting. We're not looking at measurements around the abandoned callers or staffing level. We're looking at measurements around the transfer rates, around the, the agent productivity. And there's countless things you could measure. You could measure their average hold time, their average treatment time, their handle time if you're in work groups, um, the uh, transfer rates like I have here. And this is all about comparative analytics. Let's take our agents and see how they stack up against one another. The group average for this team, I might be covering this, it's about 20%, but I've got agents that range from on an upwards of 23% down to about 17%. Uh, about There's a big gap there. Why is one agent transferring more calls than another? That agent might be lazy. They might be undertrained. Lazy means they're passing off work. I don't want to deal with this. Undertrained means I don't know how to deal with this. Either way, those are problems. Again, think about your own interactions with groups that you called into, if you get connected to someone, explain to them why you called and just waited for five minutes and then they say, I can't help you, let me transfer you, you're gonna be frustrated. This is a measurement of that indication. It doesn't stop here either though. I've got another drill through that I can get into. So I've got D. Contreras as one of the agents here. If I click on D. Contreras' name, I can actually pull up a detailed record list of all of those calls. So you start to get a picture here. We started on a dashboard. We drilled to a report. I'm drilling through again. What we focus on is peeling away at your data like layers of an onion. We think it's really important to be able to understand down to the granular individual call level what the data is telling you. Let me zoom in a little bit. This is probably a little small for those in the back. This is showing me a record list with each and every single one of the call records broken out here. And I can scroll through and see all kinds of details. What was the caller ID? What were the time measurements? Where did this call transfer to if it transferred? 
And I can even click on one of these records individually to pull up a cradle to grave report. And this is our final step in the drill through, getting all the way down to the individual call record. I won't go through this in complete detail. Uh, if you want to understand this a little bit more, feel free to swing by my booth. I've got this up on a monitor and can share it with you. What this is showing me is step by step how this call moved through the system. It came in, it waited for a long time on a group, some messages and announcements played, and ultimately it got connected to an agent. Here's what's important here. A call that waited six minutes is significantly longer than the minute average for this group. The question that you're going to ask yourself in those circumstances is what was my team doing? Were they busy? Were they ignoring their phone? Were they, if we're in contact center, in release? Were they not logged in altogether? Team activity is a report that can show exactly that, a timeline view of what every single agent was doing here within this group. This is investigative in nature. If there are problems, if you have holes within your contact center, you're going to start to see that crop up, whether it's on a real-time wall board or it's in some of the experiences that customers are telling you about. You need the ability to quickly and nimbly investigate those and then figure out, look, everyone makes a mistake from time to time. The problem here is there's an agent that was supposed to be logged in that wasn't. That's not necessarily a big deal if it only happened once, but if that's happening over and over and over again, we want to figure that out and then coach or replace as needed around that. So that's an example of how Bright Metrics is used in the day-to-day -day operations. Again, we can tie into any kind of call information. This in particular was a contact center. Work groups and hunt groups function exactly the same. Obviously, there's certain measurements that don't tie into those because functionalities aren't the same. But in general, the flow of, you know, show me a dashboard, let me drill down to the individual calls and investigates available. And the only other side, for any of those of you that are on the more technical side of your organization, we also can tie into a lot of configuration data around your system to make it easier to manage and troubleshoot your day-to-day -day operations within the system. Uh, there's a bunch of these reports, and if you're a technical person, again, swing by and I'll show you even more than this. But by far and large, one of the best ones to look at is an example of our call flow reporting. Uh, this is a functionality that specifically is uh, one of our advanced features that we offer to customers of our premier partners. The Blackstar team is one of our premier partners, so by being a customer of theirs, if you have Bright Metrics today or if you're interested in getting Bright Metrics, you'll get access to this feature along with a couple others. This report is a technical diagram that will look at any starting point in your environment. Those starting points could be auto attendant menus, uh, hunt groups, work groups, route points, dial numbers. For those of you that are on contact center, you also have IRN services and scripts. What this is going to do is build a flowchart diagram for you from that starting point and show all of the branching paths, whoops, all the branching paths that a caller could take from there once they enter that point. I'll tell you, we got into this space, we used to be Shortel partners 10 years ago, uh, similar to the Blackstar team based in California in the United States. Uh, I used to be a project manager at that company before we created Bright Metrics. I can't tell you what I would have given to have had this functionality for deployments back then. It's partially the reason why we built it is we used to develop these things by hand. I'm sure some of you do this as well. This will show me, here's an auto attendant. There are six branching options that could be taken off this auto attendant. I can see where each one of them goes. For instance, four or five are going to a work group. Here's the work group memberships. Here's the ring pattern. Here's the uh, number of rings per member. If I follow another thread like this, number one, that takes to a submenu. And from that submenu, I can bridge and branch into uh, ECC, or if I go up here into another work group, and I can see all the different points from this breaking up. Here's why this is important. For those of you that have had your system for a little while, a few years perhaps, you've probably started to make changes to your call flow from how it was initially architected. Anytime that starts to happen, you wind up with these challenges in the system where you might make a change at one point in the call flow chain and not recognize or realize that, that down farther in the chain, suddenly that very small change had a ripple effect where now callers are being orphaned. They're stuck somewhere where they can't for take further action or they're looping through the system. The way to diagnose that without something like this is to dial through all the possible deviations of your trees. That takes a lot of time. Or try to piece it together through the menus where you configure it. It's not as easy to see it. In a graphical view like this, I can easily see the termination points. For instance, this is a termination point. This one's fine. It's a voicemail. That's an action the caller could take. But if that was an auto attendant or an empty work group, then we see we have a problem. We also, you might have noticed there's an odd inefficiency in this group that's been uh, here. It's kind of a legacy holdout. They used to have different destinations for four and five. They go to the same place now. 
this is an example of where if you're paying attention to these reports or if you suspect a problem or hear a problem, pull up this report, take a look. From here, you can actually download this to an SVG file, edit it in Visio or another vector editor if you want to, and then take that and use that as your guide to remap the system. And it runs as a live query every time you run this report. So you can then make your changes, come back, take a look at this. It'll show you your reflected changes. If everything looks good, you're all set. And I'd be remiss if I didn't also mention that this can be run for a point in time or different dates. So a lot of times your call flow adjustments will be around after hours or holiday schedules. We can break that out for you and show you this for those points in time. This is, again, one example of some of the configurations I can get into. We can do inventory reports for you on your licenses, on your DID numbers, on your uh, phones and your switches and all that kind of information. I'd be happy to show that to anyone that's interested in it. But that's kind of why, that's the broad overview of what I wanted to cover today. We think data analytics is crucial. Again, you've made a significant investment in your system. One of the main benefits of a modern system is the ability to track data. And the Mitel Connect system does a really, really good job of pulling a lot of information and logging it in CDR and for ECC uh, in the CCIR databases. We give you the interface to dynamically and easily play around with that. And you might ask me, well, you know, I have some canned reports. What's the difference between Bright Metrics and that? The main difference there is a canned report, we actually have canned reports as well. If I go into reporting, I've got some standard reports. But here's the thing, when you look at, let's take work groups as an example. For those of you that have deployed work groups to your organization, you'll know there's a lot that work groups can do. You can do different ring patterns, you can set up overflows, you can, uh, you can set up queue steps, you can set up work group voicemail, but almost every organization that we engage with uses, you know, a portion of the feature set that applies to them specifically. A canned report's gonna give you all the metrics for all the possible deviations, but for your organization, you look at that canned report, it's probably gonna have a lot of things zeroed out on it because you're not using those functions. Not a problem, but also you kinda have to wade through that to understand what's important. Bright Metrics really wants you to focus on build the report that's meaningful for the task at hand and dynamically play around with it as you start to see things within the data. Data visualization is extremely personal. Everyone thinks about it differently. I might see things in line charts where you see things in pie charts. One of us is not right or wrong. It's just a difference in our own ability to interpret information. And so we try to give you a tool that's flexible and configurable. So again, swing by my booth. Like I said, you've made a sizable investment in your phone system or perhaps you're evaluating a sizable investment. Data analytics is what can give you a significant return on that investment over the years that you have your system in place. Again, a big thank you to, to the Blackstar team for having me out. I'm really happy to be here. Swing by. I'd love to talk to you more about Brent Metrics.